Hey guys, this is Bluff Monkey back again with Sonic Academy, and today we're going to look at Psychic Modulation Echo Melt 3. Now, I did a video on Echo Melt 2 a couple of years ago, I think. Um, it's a quite a quirky multi effects plugin um, which helps recreate some pitch variation and weird um, saturation and delay effects. Uh, but the plugin's been updated, it's had quite a few changes, so let's have a look at it right now. Okay, so I've pulled up Echo Melt 2, which is on the left here, this one, um, and Echo Melt 3 on the right. Now I am running the beta version, um, I don't think there's going to be any changes, I've been in contact with the dev, uh, there shouldn't be any major changes between now and release, um, which at the time of making this video could be within the next couple of weeks, but by the time the video comes out it should be available. Uh, but most of the fun functionality is there and working. Um, I have come across a couple of bugs, but nothing major. They will be ironed out for release, I'm sure. So the first thing you'll notice is that the user interface on Echo Melt 3 is a lot cleaner. Um, and one bonus is that it can be resized. I always like it when um, plugins can be resized like this. But the thing that strikes me most is how much cleaner and easier to look at the interface is. Uh, there have been some changes which I'll just go over briefly. The melt section on Echo Melt 2 has been expanded into different sections. Um, the saturation, which was fairly basic in Echo Melt 2, has been expanded into a tone shaper section. And the full parametric EQ has been dropped and incorporated into the tone, shape, tone shaper section. Try saying that quickly. The echo delay section is pretty much the same, a change in layout, but he has simplified the chorus a lot into one knob, which is down here in the melt section, which I do concur with. When I have chorus, I tend not to mess around with it too much. I just switch it on or off. So I don't think that's a major issue. So let's just get rid of echo melt two, which was this one. I'm just gonna cut it here. So first thing I've done is I have created a simple single sine wave note so that we can have a listen to what some of the effects are doing. So you can hear the melt and the tone shaper and the echo working there, which I'm all gonna, I'm gonna switch them all off. Now the tone shaper, it's, the implementation is, is quite unusual. So I'm just gonna go through the controls as I use them. So let's just listen to that sine wave again. <coughs> So if I turn the tone shaper on, nothing much happens. You actually need to drive into the tone shaper. And if you look at the volume here, that does actually increase the volume quite a lot. Now, it, it's not unusual to have, when you've got like a saturation plug-in, it's not unusual to have an input drive and an output trim or an output gain. But they haven't done that here. What happens is as you increase the level of the saturation here with this big red knob, um, it, it automatically attenuates the output gain. So he's used that level, it's, it's the level knob itself that's got the um, compensation for the output gain. So let's listen to this again. So if you look at the volume on this channel, as I increase the level of the saturation, so the actual sound of the saturation is increasing, the level is dropping. Now. I probably still, I have spoken to him about it, so I'd probably prefer it if we still had some kind of manual control um, because you don't necessarily want the level dropping either. Um, you want the input drive and the level to stay the same so you can actually hear the difference. But this is how it is for now. It's not the end of the world. And then you can change the shape of the saturation as well. We'll hear that work better when I'm not using it just on a sine wave. And then the EQ section is incorporated into this. It's a, it's a basic three band EQ uh, and there's a low cut built in. I'm not sure where the low cut is set. Uh, I don't think it mentions in the manual, but it's probably, I would imagine, somewhere between 60 and 100 hertz. Now what you can do is you can drop down, using these little lines here, you can drop into the, um, the frequency per band and the Q. So this low, mid and high, you can actually change the frequency of where it's operating at and the the shape, the cue of the curve as well. You're not gonna hear much of that on a sine wave either. Uh, the reason I've chosen a sine wave is I just wanted to quickly have a look at the melt section. Um, just a quick observation, these little question mark slash exclamation marks in each box here 
is going to randomize that particular section and obviously you can load in different presets per section as well there's not a lot in there at the moment because i said this is beta and there will be a full preset section for the overall plugin as well so you can save presets per section which i always find useful and you can have global presets which save the state of each three um, sections of the plugin so coming down to the melt section uh tone shape is off let's switch on melt so melt comes in three flavors you've got flow drop out and jump uh, we're not going to spend too too long on each one and you can switch them on and off manually as well uh, let's just go back to flow so basically flow is replicating wow and flutter so that wow and flutter if you're not sure is the slow and fast pitch variation you hear from tape machines so wow is the slow and flutter is a the faster pitch variation so let's just give an example of that now uh you well what you can do is you can set the frequency of the wow and the frequency of the flutter so that's how quickly the pitch is changing and then you can mix between the two so let's just listen to wow switch it over to or, or blend it over to flutter so you can hear that pitch variation is much faster back to wow much slower pitch variation you can either sync this manually using these frequency dials or it can be BPM synced as well I'm not sure why you'd want like a analog random variation to be pitch synced but it's there if you wish i'm not sure i'd use it like that and then there are various different types you've got smooth robotic snag up snag down um, let's just listen to them quickly so ro robotic is almost more like a sample and hold it's it's kind of jumping it's not smooth so if you imagine a, a stepped lfo that's what i'm hearing snag up is fairly obvious it's going wee, wee, wee. snag down is the opposite mm -hmm. But for my purposes, I'd use it mostly in smooth mode. Uh, coming across to dropout. Dropout is replicating amplitude dropouts or volume dropouts uh, that can sometimes be associated with tape. Um, if we look at the frequency here, this is obviously, again, the speed at which these dropouts are happening. Let's just listen to it quickly. So you can hear that. If I slow the frequency down... You can actually see it on the volume fader over here. Now the phase, there's there's no mention in the in the manual of what the phase dial does here. I'm only assuming that the they're using some kind of LFO to generate these dropouts, and it's actually shifting the LFO in time. I'm assuming that. Uh, and then there's a I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the flow section, but you do have a randomized dial as well which will make the LFO, the changes, less linear. So we've got different melt types here. Smooth. Robotic again. Yeah, you can definitely hear that step, stepped. They all behave slightly differently. And again, you can do this manual or BPM. Again, this is something I'd probably want manual. So this um, dropout, uh, if you've ever used a cassette tape, as the cassette spool, spool round, sometimes you hear this little audio dropout as the, the tape kind of doesn't stay completely stable. And then finally, we're going to look at jump. And this is more, it's similar to flow, but it's more of a quick, quick change in speed or rate. So you can hear that bloop bloop. So you can have blip, soft blip. I'm assuming that means exponential up and exponential down. So the reason you're hearing clicking is because I'm using a sine wave and obviously it's, it's making these changes when the sine wave isn't on a zero crossing point. So you're hearing the sine wave kind of cap off. 
it's not a it's not a problem with the plugin it's the source material i'm using uh and then obviously this you can change right as well and this is this is always going to be um synced to the tempo of the daw four bars three bars two bars one and a half bars one bar half half no half dotted half half triplet etc 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 so there's various ways of using the melt section now a couple of additional things that we need to look at the chorus has been incorporated into the melt section so let's listen to that Ooh, all of a sudden my ears wake up Uh, and again, chorus is something I like to have either on or off. It's not something I tend to play with very much. Um, we've got overall depth. So this is almost like a, a wet dry knob for this section. And then we've got the echo dial here. And what this is doing, this is feeding the melt section into the echo. So instead of having, having the modulation built into the echo section or the delay section, you can actually feed it into the delay section here. So whatever you're doing in the melt section can can also uh, modulate the delay sound as well. Now, I'm not going to spend too long on the delay because it's fairly straightforward. The only thing we need to look at is the sync mode. You can either have the delay time manual or synced. For my preference, I always have it synced uh, unless I'm doing some kind of very special effect. You can um, lock the left and right channels together or have them separate. See, they're locked together now, or I can separate them out. These are all fairly standard um, delay controls. You can have it in ping pong mode. There's offset to add some additional width so they're not completely locked onto each other. Skip this bit for a second. Um, input gain, high pass filter, low pass filter, feedback, and overall mix. So we don't need to spend too long on those controls. Uh, it can also be loop is like a, a freeze as well, so the delay can just go on and on and on. Um, the only control that we're going to look at later on as we go into each individual channel is this beat factor. So what this does, this is like a crossfade where you can do a multiplication of the overall echo time. So over on the right here, it's set to uh, one times standard. So this is going to actually be the quarter note on the left and the dotted eighth note on the right. So one is going to stay on that timing but we can crossfade over to 0.375 of that timing as well. So you're crossfading the delay times up or down or in between uh, the two values you've got set here. So you can have these values as between 0.125 and 0.5. And over on the right here, you can set it between 0.75 and 2. Uh, so that just allows you to do some quite cool creative effects with automation. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And then finally, we've got a global dry wet, global volume, and then this Mondo Melt. <clears throat> now, the Mondo Melt has a what he's calling a, like a smart algorithm, and it increases all of the controls on all of the sections at various rates, depending on what you're doing with them. We will have a look at that in a section for, in a second, but for me, it, it tends to be a little bit overkill, but it's there if you want it. It could be good for transitions between sections of a track. So that's a quick overlook of what the controls do. We can lose this channel now. And I've just put together, I've done like a, a very, I'm gonna call it retro, it's not really synth wave, it's more retro, I need water. A retro analogy st style little loop here. Um, just going through the channels quickly. Let me just turn this up. This is a kick which I'm doing nothing with, this is to basically underpin the drum kit I've done. So I'm using the C78 core kit from Ableton Live. Um, this is the In The Air Tonight drum machine, just in case you didn't know. So this kick is just to underpin the kick in this kit, which isn't particularly good. And then I've got a Sonic Academy loop going on. Then I've added a bass sound from Anna T. Pad from Anna T. And then I found a weird kind of 
arpeggiated synth sample from somewhere. And I've done no mixing here. I've just leveled things out to roughly where I want them to be. I've got no EQ on anything, no compression on anything, except for this sound here. And I'll show you why. Because the original sample, the volumes between each note were all over the place. Look, I'll show you. Why would you do that? Anyway, so I've compressed the crap out of that. And I've got an instance of echo melt on each one. And I just want to quickly go over what I've done with each one. I'm not trying to massively over affect anything here. Um, it's just really using the plugin in the absence of any other compression or EQ to see what we can come up with uh, just with echo melt three. So having a quick look at the core kit, um, all I've got going on here, and I've done, I've used the Echo Melt 2 plugin. I, I've used the Melt section in that a lot before. So I'm going to focus on the other things um, a little bit more. We're going to use the Melt section a little bit, but it's the Tone Shaper that I really enjoy using in this at the moment. I switch this on. It's a very subtle difference. Okay. Off. Just brings it together a little bit to my ears. So what we've got going on here is the input drive is turned all the way up and I've turned the level all the way up as well. And I'm using the EQ here to just boost the lows a little bit. I'm pulling all the mids out so we've got a nice smiley face and boost the highs a little bit as well. So what you'll also notice, there is a low pass filter at the end of this chain as well. And what that does is if, you, if you're getting too much kind of harsh top end, with the saturation and drive, this filter can pull that down a little bit. So let's have a listen. Okay. So it can just soften off that harsh top end you can sometimes get with saturation. And that's all I've done with this one. So that's quite flat. That's a little bit fizzier. Let's bring the kick back in. Yeah, it just sounds a bit more exciting with the tone shaper on. Uh, next, we're kind of going to have a look at the loop. Let's just listen to it in isolation first. So I'm doing something similar. Um, I'm, I'm just using the EQ for this one, um, but running it into the echo as well. So what I'm doing with the echo is I'm just trying to give the loop a little bit more width. Free width. So again, I'm just using Simple EQ. I'm pushing the mids a little bit on this one. So that's a little bit flatter. Pushing the mids forward a little bit. And while we're here, <clears throat> there's nothing fancy going on with the delay. It's just using um, eighth note on the left, quarter note on the right. Let's just have a listen to what the beat factor does. So at the moment, it's set to one, which is one to one ratio with the listed displayed tempos. Right, let's do it 100% wet. So this is all delay sound. Ooh. So there's all sorts of things you could do. You know, if you start automating that parameter, there's all sorts of things you could do um, for special effects and transitions. Not something I'm going to do now, but the option is there. Gives it some extra width. Turn it off. Probably overdid it a little bit. And then coming over to the bass sound. And all I'm doing again is I'm using um, Tone Shaper. This time I've got the drive quite high. Um, I haven't pushed the level too much. Um, and I'm pushing the low end and the mids in EQ. And it's just to give the bass a little bit more bite. I didn't want to do too much to it because the bass sound already sounded okay. Just makes it a little bit more aggressive, especially when you open the filter, which I haven't done. That makes it 
massive difference, right? So that's the base. And all, what I'm doing here is just making a little bit of difference per channel. And then let's have a look at the pad. Now the pad I wanted to do quite a lot to. So this is where I've brought the melt section back in. I look a little bug there, can you see that? Hmm. That's it. Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of things like that. It will be fixed before release, so I'm told. So the pad sound, really nice, huge open sound. But um, Tone Shaper, I've just pulled, I haven't used it for saturation, I've just pulled some of the mids down to make it a little bit more smiley face because it's such a huge sound, the pad, I wanted to leave space for some of the other elements. But I've got, um, I've got the flow mode veering towards wow, which is the slow changes. Um, I've got dropout 32%, um, so you get the odd volume dropout. But then I've got the chorus switched up and I'm also pushing the melt section into the echo. So I've got, again, fairly standard echo sound. We don't need to focus too much on it, just to give it some extra width. But the melt section is pushing into that echo so we get even more modulation on the outside. So have a listen to this. It does affect the sound quite a lot. I'll probably use some more melt. Maybe not that much. It becomes very static. It's still a nice sound, but it becomes very static without echo melt. Finally, we're going to look at Mr. Arpeggio. So again, um, pushing it a little bit with Tone Shaper, input drive, quite high level of saturation, and I've got the shape over to the right, so it's more top-endy. Um, I've taken out a lot of the lows, I've taken out some of the mids, and I'm pushing the top end, but I'm also pulling the, the final low-pass filter I'm using that to take some of that harsh top end away. Uh, melt is in full effect here. We've got flow switched on. Uh, I keep it in smooth mode. Dropout is doing just a little bit. And then there's the odd jump. In fact, I'm not sure if I want the jump. I'm going to switch that off. And then we've got a little bit of chorus. And we're pushing into the echo again. I've used a quarter note and a dotted eighth note. I'm keeping everything here on one so that we're not messing around with this too much. Uh, there's nothing else I'm really doing here, but what I will do is show you the Mondo melt section here. Let's just switch it on and off quickly. Really makes a difference, doesn't it? It really does make that sound good. But listen to what happens when I turn Mondo melt up. Like it goes nuts. Um, again, not something I probably use in this little demo, but again, the the use of that for transitional between you know, between sections of a track could be quite useful. Sounds like somebody's killing a cat. So let's just have a listen to it all together. Switch them all off. All the um, instances of echo, but I'm going to switch off. So it doesn't change the track massively. I've used it in a subtle way. I mean, per channel, it sounds like you've done a lot, but it 
the whole track's flatter without echo melt so as i said this should be out within the next few weeks we are kind of coming towards the end of september now so he did say mid to, mid to end of september um i've always loved this plugin um i'm personally i'm a, I'm a big fan of um quirky plugins that do two or three different things because you can just put them on a channel and then just go nuts you don't have to keep searching for different plugins you got a little bit of saturation a little bit of eq a little bit of delay um i i kind of prefer working that way so definitely worth a look anyway hope you found that useful and i'll see you again soon cheers Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace.